Welcome back. I'll tell you something, I wouldn't mind being the lead singer of a band that sold 50 million albums. It's been a bad day. Please don't take a picture. It's been a bad day. Please. It's been a bad day. Please don't take a picture. It's been a bad day. Please. Ladies and gentlemen, from REM, Michael Stipe. That was beautiful, thank you. Now, before we go any further, you have a new album out. It's the best of REM. That's right. There it is. And it's... When you listen to this album, you kind of think, God, did they really make that many brilliant songs? How do you feel when you listen to it? Do you listen to I it? I haven't listened to it yet. You haven't heard it? <laughs> Here, you can have my no, copy. No, I have a copy. <laughs> well, no, I listen... Obviously, we... Um, the hardest part of making the thing was not picking the songs, but... Uh, figuring out how to sequence them so that they because chronologically didn't make sense uh, So we tried to we tried to sequence them like a like a, a live set and I think I think it worked Yeah, but that's the last time I listened to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it's good. Trust me. Thank you <laughs> Thanks a lot. Now This is this is probably a part of the Michael Stipe myth. Do you collect airplane tickets? Yeah <laughs> <I> do. <laughs> You must have loads. I do well, I started in 1994, <clears throat> and I, it just seemed to me that this is, here's this, you know, the ticket that you get, and you have to show it to the flight attendant as you get on. It's a souvenir of, of a place that doesn't exist. It's, it's just a souvenir of, of, a, of a space of time. Because when you travel, you're, you're not anywhere. You're just going from one place to another. And particularly on airplanes, you're going, you're, you're not, you're, you can't say I'm in Iowa or I'm in Sheffield or I'm going through... Bristol, you're you're just you're just flying through space, and and then you wind up somewhere. So I like the idea of of something that represents a a place that doesn't exist. So I have all my uh, plane tickets, and I, I I paste them into a on, I, I paste them onto poster board. And um, my mouth is really dry because I'm a little bit nervous. Hey, you're amongst friends here, Michael. Am I talking too fast? Because that happens too. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> I think it's going great so far. Okay, thanks, Brent. How many, how many of these... Um, so, boarding passes is what you collect, I yeah. believe. Boarding, yeah, boarding passes. How, how many would you say you have? Uh, uh, hundreds. Probably 500, 600. Do you... I fly alone. Yeah. <laughs> for, for, my, for my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of guessed that. Yeah. So, do you, do, you, are there in, do you browse and look? Back through your boarding passes. I do. You know what? I learned something because I put I put one of them up on the wall um, in my apartment, and it doesn't get direct sun, but the the ink that they use is starting to fade. So I have to figure out a way if I want to if I want to keep them in to the end of my life. I have to figure out a way to make them not fade or to appreciate them fading and just allow that natural yeah. entropy to be a part of what it is. I guess they're not designed for display. <laughs> <laughs> now you were. Um, I think the ultimate accolade for anyone, you were in The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> which is a, a great... We had a guest on last week who was in The Simpsons. I'm always really impressed. Who was it last week? It was Homer Simpson. He <laughs> <laughs> sat here. I should have seen it coming, really. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, uh, this is Michael and the rest of the band in, uh, in The Simpsons. You lied to us. <clears throat> Michael, no! That's not the REM way. You're right. <laughs> Let's recycle those shards and get out of here. <laughs> they have they have really they have really good writers. They do, yeah. yeah. But it's great because I think sometimes people see see you as quite a serious guy. I'm now relaxed. I can now talk. Oh, that's Sorry. good. We can just talk about anything. That took a minute. Um, but it's I think that showed that you can kind of, as we would say, take the piss out of yourself. Yeah, I think that's important. Well, the reason we, I, I come across really sincere because I have to think really hard to say, to articulate my thoughts, because I'm not that well educated. So, and I, and I have a complex about it. So I, I think really, really hard. And then. But you write fabulous lyrics, Mike. And I don't like my teeth. I, so I, I try, I don't smile. I mean, I, from childhood. You know, from it's funny you should mention your teeth, because you've probably had an influence on all sorts mm -hmm. of people, but you've had a, quite a big influence on me. Why? 
Because a friend of mine had dinner with you about five years ago. And he said to me, uh -oh. he said, I had dinner. <laughs> and at the end of dinner, Michael Stipe got a knife and went, oh, well. And checked. And I, I do that now always. You do? And it's a, it's a it very works. practical... It's a reflective you know, surface in a place where you really need one. Exactly. Yeah. They should have small teeth mirrors in restaurants. <laughs> That would be a great idea. I've always thought another good be. idea in restaurants would be an anecdote light. So when you begin an anecdote, you put a light on <laughs> so the waiter doesn't come over in the middle of the end of the night. <laughs> then when the laugh comes, you switch the light off and then he comes over. <laughs> but this is... I think this is a great idea. And the great thing is when people say, hey, what are you doing? I say, oh, this is uh, something Michael Stipe does. <laughs> Do you know cool. who I got it from? No, go on. Audrey Hepburn. Used to check her teeth with her knife. And did you have dinner with Audrey Hepburn? No, no, I never met the woman. I would have loved to, but I didn't. I never met her. She, boy, she was talented. Huh? But it's great. There's a fabulous chain across the Atlantic, <laughs> and now people who watch this now think that's a brilliant idea. That's a I'm going to start checking my. You brought a knife. That's a. I bought tool. a knife because it's hard to explain without the prop. <laughs> yeah, I brushed my teeth before I came out. On They're stage great too. now, but if you're even slightly self-conscious, feel free. To... I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty. <laughs> I'm pretty certain I'm okay. There's not that many guests I would hand a knife to. <laughs> Take that as a compliment. Do you still have a circus dog? I do. Oh. I was so impressed when I read that. She, I caught her once, and I, I, I walked into the kitchen, and the lights were off, and it was nighttime, and uh, I, I needed some water or something, and I walked into the kitchen and surprised her, and she had just... I don't know how to describe this without demonstrating it, but... She's Don't a little. It's she fine. looks like the RCA Victor dog, you know, the one his master's voice. Oh, uh, Nippa. And, yeah, half black and half white, and she's about to the table. She's about yay tall, and she weighs uh, 14 pounds, and uh, her name is Helix. And I walked into the kitchen to get a glass of water, and she had. I watched her. This is my counter, but it's about yay tall. About it's a counter, so it's right. Okay. There. It's right there. <laughs> Yeah, we, get, we have she chances went, in England. She's a dog, so she is on four legs. But she had gone, <laughs> she had gone like this and leapt and turned to get onto the counter to get a piece of bread. <laughs> and I watched the whole thing, and, and I was like, and then she and saw me. Spun in the she air. spun in the air. It was like the Matrix, or. <laughs> <laughs> but with dogs, obviously. But with dogs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's impressive. Did they tell you that I, I like to faint? They didn't. <laughs> I shouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, is it, how many people here have fainted? Raise your hand. Sit, come on, guys. <laughs> it, it's an okay. So, did you enjoy it? Raise your hand. <laughs> yeah. The One feeling. There's, I know, but look at that face. I mean, he, he means it. He looks the, American to me. Where are you from? Connecticut. <laughs> I have a website for faint enjoyers, which I can just <laughs> for later. The, the, there's just a there's a there's a call. The reason I thought of this coming off my do, sp spinning off my dog is that I had another dog, and um, he was a hound dog, and I'd put up a fence, a uh, four foot fence. With, do you guys know how much feet are here? It's about I'm I'm five. That's nine. not a four foot it's fence. A, that's, no, that's a five that's, foot fence. No, I'm five nine. So okay, it's, maybe it's here. But he was a big dog, and he had um, jumped up to get a squirrel or something. Uh, and I didn't know it, and he had impaled himself on the fence. And mm. so I got home from work or wherever, and um, <laughs> Oslo, wherever. I got home, <laughs> and um, did you have your ball? I, I was, <laughs> no, I, was uh, <laughs> I was petting him, and uh, and 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 uh, and uh, I thought, oh, he, he's he's wet and warm, and and on his chest, and and actually there was a huge hole. It was like Doubting Thomas. There was a huge hole in his chest. Oh, God. So I had to call my vet at like midnight, and she, I, I didn't know at the time, but she. Well, anyway, she had she she'd been drinking, <laughs> but she needed help to hold him down while um, while she sewed his chest back, and um, and uh, I fainted. On hold, I was holding him down, and I, the table was about. I, I seem obsessed with height, but yeah. I, I swear to God, the table was about as long as we have the height of the nearby <laughs> surface. This anecdote's gonna work. So I, I I felt something cold on my chin, and I'm holding him on the table, and it was the table. I, my my feet had gone like this. And I'd, I'd slid all the way down until my chin was resting on the table, watching her drunkenly sewing 
<laughs> his chest back shut, and, and, um, and she said, I think you should sit down. And I fell backwards into a chair and went like this. And then I woke up, and I saw my hand on the floor, and I had this whole vision of this beautiful place. And um, I was covered in sweat, and I said, I'm going to go get some air. Well, my friend April was waiting for me, and we walked outside, and it was a beautiful moon. And um, the vet had a gravel parking lot, and um, my friend was holding me up. And we got about five steps outside the door, and I said, I'm going to faint. And I fainted into the gravel and landed on my face, which was OK. I mean, it was OK. But <laughs> she turned me over because it was really dramatic. And I woke up, and I was in, I was in this beautiful sweat. And my what happens is I think your brain just, it's, it's like every synapse in your brain completely realigns itself. And it's like, it's like the hard drive has been emptied. And that's what happens when you faint. And it's such a, for, for me, because I, I think way too much and I, I, and I can't always connect the thoughts and <clears throat> it makes for great lyric writing, but it's not always easy to have dinner with me. But <laughs> for me to have something in my life that, that empties everything like that is such a great thing, you know? Well, look, let's, um, let's close by having uh, okay. another look at one of your greatest hits. And um, this is Orange Crush. Oh. And this seems to me to be, um, you've come up with a method here that if, if you find lip syncing difficult, this is a great way around it. <laughs> No, that was that is the, that is every bad haircut of the 1980s rolled into one, <laughs> and, I, and I apologize for it. <laughs> and I, I think I'm I'm, lo I'm just looking and I'm thinking like, okay, reactionary asshole, American pop singer. I'm looking at all the other things like, okay, I'll take my shirt off too and I'll unbutton my jacket. And I think I had my belt undone, which always makes people really tense. Uh, yeah. yeah, it does. <laughs> We once did a show in Florida in front of all these frat boys, and I just didn't like them at all, but we got paid for it, and we needed the money at the time. This is 1981. And I used to wear long pants and a pair of shorts over it, but I would keep the zipper down, because it, it made people really upset. <laughs> I can't, I, I don't know why I even said that just now. <laughs> Sorry. Did it's anyone just... faint? <laughs> in fact. <laughs> and how high was your penis exactly? <laughs> Yeah. Well, Michael, the, I think the uh, REM's Greatest Hits is a truly marvellous album with Thank lots you. of brilliant music on it, and you should be very, very proud of it indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Stipe. Thank you.